All right, as we go into the off season, one of the things we try to do is break it up into different areas so that as we prepare for spring ball and the summer training, uh, our kids have a pretty good understanding of where we're going to go. Obviously, the first one is winter conditioning, which is uh, obviously what we do with our strength coach, uh, winter workouts, strength training, and then individual quarterback fundamentals that they work uh, independently by themselves or with a strength coach uh, during the off season. Second part of it is if you're dealing with uh, dual sport athletes, much like you are in high school, you got young men that are playing both basketball or playing baseball or, or running track or whatnot. So uh, you've got to find time for these young men so you can spend um, the time necessary to help them develop in their skills, both fundamentally and mentally as they prepare for spring ball. And the th obviously the third part being spring ball as you get into um, schools that have the ability to go spring ball or they use it in their classes, their uh, uh athletic period during the uh, season as well. The QB workshop. This for us is, is voluntary and much like it should be in uh, whether it's high school level, junior college level, or even where we're at here at NCAA, uh, Division I, 1AA, or whatnot. Uh, we're not allowed to work with our players specifically, individually, uh, unless it's uh, permitted by the NCAA. So we create workshops for our quarterbacks. It's all a voluntary session. We call them athletic periods or workshops where they're all allowed to come in and meet voluntarily and, and go over different areas of, uh, of the program. A allows us to meet with all the quarterbacks weekly. We talk about academics, and um, we also visit in terms of uh, football part of it. It shows a great commitment by the players and allows you to uh, um, see what commitment they have in terms of wanting to get better in the program and want to learn more about uh, your program. B, you can allows you to review previous the previous season season cutups, and obviously go through the playbook. It's a great time for you to, to go through the playbook page by page, in a uh, slow and uh, methodical uh, speed that allows them to really dissect the playbook, and then you can spend time talking about all the different uh, areas of the, of the playbook. We can break it down from run game to protections to uh, quick game, and then to drop back. Um, play action, uh, red zone, different areas of the playbook you'd like to cover, but also gives us a great opportunity for our young men to study cut-ups. And you can go through the cut-ups and talk about decision-making and allows them to learn um, on the move and on the run as well. It also gives you an opportunity to prepare the underclassmen, young men that are in your program that are coming in as freshmen or sophomores that are getting an opportunity to uh, learn more about the program. Maybe they've been on the freshman team or the JV team, and now you get a chance to spend time with them and talk about the philosophy of your program, the philosophy of the offense, and the philosophy of quarterback play. It also uh, allows you to, to uh, stay involved in football. You know, it allows them to keep the football awareness, which the, you would like all your young men to have, even if they're involved in, in dual sports. Um, it just brings about the football awareness uh, in the classroom as well. And also gives you an opportunity to build a uh, bond between you and the coach because you're building trust with the players. They're learning from you. You're learning more about them. You get a chance to, to talk just about life in general as well as besides football too. Um, QB school topics that we like to discuss throughout the uh, off season for us um, we'll talk about offensive philosophy what our philosophy here is are we a uh, spread team are we a are you a um, pro style team are you a multiple are you a quarterback run game team um, what's your philosophy offensively is it to uh, push the ball down the field is it to stretch the, the field horizontally both in the pass game and run game is it to stretch the defense and then allow the quarterback to run the ball uh, what what's your philosophy offensively um, you know create a philosophy for your kids that uh, you're gonna be a well-disciplined football team a team takes care of the football a team that's uh, doesn't beat themselves a team that uh, you know, uh, finds a way to win. You, you, it's a great opportunity to talk about what you believe in as a coach, what you believe in as a program, and to speak about your head coach's philosophy. Uh, the second one uh, topic we talk about a lot about is the char characteristics of the quarterback, what you're looking for in a quarterback, what your expectations are of the quarterback play, and I'll discuss that here in a little bit as we go. And going into spring, what are your expectations for the quarterback position? What are the goals for the quarterback? And what is the goal for the offense? And oftentimes I'll have the young men write down their uh, goals for the spring and going into summer. So, And then we go back and check it and read through it and see if they've met their goals. We'll talk about defensive coverages, reading coverages, how to read coverages, and then uh, ha handling pressure when you get teams that like to blitz, whether they're bringing a, they're a field blitz team, a zone blitz team, or a fire zone team, or a team likes to uh, play man-to-man, -man, gives you a chance to how, to how are you going to handle pressure. 
Um, what's your answer to pressure, to man-to-man -to -man coverage? Um, do you have an answer for it? And it gives you a chance to visit with the young man so they can see it on film and then be able to transfer it to the playing field. I think football awareness is real big because here's an, here's an opportunity to learn the language um, that you're teaching. You know, when you talk about zone blocking schemes or man protection schemes or a specific route or a specific, excuse me, a specific scheme in the pass game. Is it a high low? Is it a, uh, a man beater? You know, you're looking for areas that you can build a uh, terminology for young men so that when you talk, you're both on the same page about what you're doing. You know, the nomenclature of the quarterback is so in, in so at large that you want to be able to have a get a library built amongst your quarterbacks so that when you do meet and you you describe a scheme or a concept or a, a zone blitz team or, or a coverage they understand what you're talking about if you're talking about too deep you know three deep most quarterbacks have a good understanding but if you're talking about match matching zone coverages you know or two uh, two man uh, it's a great opportunity to build a library for your young men and, and for your quarterbacks at the same time and then we're going to talk about attacking the red zone. I'll, have a, I'll talk more a little bit later about that uh, as we get into the uh, session here. But uh, attacking the red zone, what's your thought process as you go into the red zone? Are you a team that likes to spread it to throw it, and, or excuse me, spread it to run it? Or are you a team that wants to bring in people tight and play action and try to get over the top? What are the areas in the red zone that you're trying to attack, and what schemes are you going to use? Um, another topic we'll talk about in our uh QB uh, school topics is quarterback run mechanics, you know, uh, having proper mechanics on handing off the inside zone, the outside zone, the power scheme, counters, you know, it's so stuff that we just overlook and take for granted that our kids understand the mechanics of the run game, proper footwork underneath the center, are you a staggered stance, are you, are you a uh, even stance, balanced stance, uh, how to take a snap from the center is a great opportunity to talk about the fundamentals of the quarterback play. And then opponent study. We will take time and, and dissect an opponent uh, either once a week for sure. We always pick a team and we go back and look at film of them and look at them defensively. It gives us an opportunity to know the personnel that we're going to be playing the, the following year and the schemes that they uh, are going to be utilizing going into 2013 or, or the upcoming season. Uh, it gives us an opportunity also to study film of other quarterbacks that are similar in our offensive style. We'll take college teams and look at them. Uh, and it would be a great opportunity for you to they're in high school that if you are looking for uh, teams in your area or teams in, in the state that run the same style of offense, try to get as much film as you can from opponents and see what, if you can study their film <coughs> and see how their quarterbacks play within that system. <coughs> Excuse me. And it gives you a good time to uh, visit other quarterbacks that are playing. We take this opportunity to visit a lot of, of NFL teams um, on film, and it's a uh, uh, I know we uh, researched it and be able to gather as much film as we can on, on the NFL quarterbacks so we can watch their style and see how they play and see if it matches a lot of what we do. Um, just a lot of just some topics that we utilize and some topics that we like to go over during the off season. And it's just all you're doing is creating an opportunity to meet with your players, give them a chance to talk football, and a chance to cover things that uh, are going to be necessary for the upcoming season. A couple of those that we work on in the teaching tapes. As you break down your uh, preseason uh, offense, you, you're going to go through the quick game, and it gives you a great opportunity to go back through. And I often have our quarterbacks as one of their homework assignments as to go through the quick game. And was it a good decision or a poor decision? Or was it a defensive scheme that got us? Or uh, just to basically go down and break down the uh, quicks and then just come back with answers. Were we good in our decision making? Um, what can we learn from it? Uh, was our footwork improper? Do we have correct footwork? You know, what allowed us to be successful and what allowed us not to be successful? And the drop back, going into the drop back cut-ups, you know, you break it into the families. We have a high-low family, a smash family, a vertical family. Um, you got an in-out family, and we break all our pass scheme drop back-wise into those families, and we'll dissect a family, um, a pass drop back family, uh, throughout the uh, spring in preparation, or excuse me, throughout the winter, and then even into the spring as we prepare for, prepare for the upcoming season. We go into play action where you look at your play action game and see where you're successful at and does it match your run game and your run game should match uh, for not, I'd say at least 90 percent of your time should match your uh, play action. Uh, QB movement we look at boots, nakeds, sprint out, what was successful, what we can do better, what gives your quarterback that may be not as high as tall in stature as you would like so you got to create throwing lanes and throwing opportunities and a great way to do that is get your quarterback outside so uh, we'll dissect the boots, the nakeds, and the sprint game. How can we better uh, facilitate success on the field by using our quarterback movements to create that? Uh, screens, you know, people do a lot of screen a lot of screens this uh, at this time, and they're using it in their spread offense, whether it's an outside jailbreak screen or a, a uh, 
a, uh, a rocket screen. Uh, we use a lot of running back screens, and we match it with a run game, and we match it with a uh, quick game. And so, so we're not just dropping back and just throwing screen just to throw a screen. We always try to match it up with an illusion of a pass game, whether it's a high-low, whether it's a uh, mesh game. We always try to match our screens with it, so it gives an illusion of that, and we'll break that down. And then individual quarterback fundamental work weekly. We have our quarterbacks go out and work with our centers um, uh, when they're doing their uh, winter conditioning with the strength coaches. Well, they'll uh, work on center exchange, uh, QB center exchange, and then all gun footwork as well. So you're working all your three-step, your five-step, your quick seven, um, your movement stuff from under center, as well as gun mechanics, taking a drop, rock, and drop, rock, and throw. Uh, footwork or if you're taking a quick three or you're taking a, a quick five with a definite hitch up into the pocket it's working mechanics from the gun here's a breakdown of one of the days that we'll be looking at that we used last year uh, every day that we meet we try or once a week that we meet we always make sure we have an academic uh, sheet that we fill out and just gives our kids an opportunity to tell us what they have due uh, this week in their uh, class schedule um, class schedules and then um, classes, excuse me, and then uh, what's coming up in terms of so if there's a test coming up or a paper due, we know, and it keeps us uh, in tune with them as what they're doing academically. Plus, it just reinforces our commitment to academics uh, where we're at. So it allows us to tell them if they know what they're getting in that class, we kind of get an up uh, an updated version of what they're doing a progress report, and then we do that once a week with our kids. Uh, our throwing schedule, we, our kids are into uh, having a schedule in terms of what the, when they're going to throw, uh, how many times they're going to throw that week. Um, what day they're throwing and who they're throwing with. And they maybe go out there and just work specifically with the tight ends and running backs one day. They may go out there and work specifically just with the wide receivers, or maybe they're out there one day with everybody involved and just work on route work. And we don't spend a lot of time on schemes. Uh, we wait until we get closer to spring ball or into summer. Um, we like to spend a lot of time just working individual cuts, individual routes so that we can work on just timing of the pass game. I think it's real, real uh, essential to the success of your team. You get better understanding. Your young kids get a better understanding of how the routes are run and the timing of the throw, when it needs to be thrown, great anticipation, uh, learning who's who uh, has a quicker release or who has a quicker uh, transition in and out of cuts and when to uh, throw the football. Uh, and then our characteristics of the UNT quarterback, we like to break that down and talk about what we're looking for in the quarterback and our expectations at that position. Here's an example of reading coverages. I'll have that hand out here in a little bit. But uh, we talk about uh, reading coverage that day. We may pick one certain coverage. Maybe it's cover two or a version of cover two and uh, middle field open or a middle field close concept. And we're going to break that defense, uh, that coverage down so our kids have a better understanding where if they're drop uh, – if the linebackers in drop mode, or if they're in drop and match up as a as a receiver comes in their area, uh, we talk about that. So we spend time just talk about how to read coverages, and then homework assignment. We usually give them something to watch on their own, and um, we give them certain questions to ask. Or we give them certain questions we want them answered, and what we're looking for, and it gives them a chance to go back and watch other people as well, and it keeps them in the tune to watching football. Characteristics of the quarterback of a championship quarterback and what we look for in our quarterbacks here at the University of North Texas. And I think that's what a lot of people are looking for. You know, uh, you're looking for a guy that creates an opportunity to put your team in a, in a position to win. Um, one of the first characteristics we look for is a young, uh, is a quarterback that is mentally and physically tough. We want a guy that can uh, take a hit and get back up, and we want a kid that's mentally tough that he knows he may be two for ten uh, out the gate going into the you know the first quarter, and all of a sudden he comes back and bounces back, and he's ten for twelve. So uh, you've got to find a kid that, can, that men mentally can handle the adversity and is physical enough to be able to you know take some hits and uh, play this position. And as we looked at Alex Smith and talked about Alex Smith, here's a, here's a guy that uh, went. To the National Football League has been through three head coaches, seven offense coordinators, until he was finally established at the quarterback position with Coach Harbaugh. And uh, and he's got to be tough because he's been replaced and he's had to uh, go into a backup mode. But uh, this guy is definitely mentally tough, and uh, we know he's definitely physically tough because we, we've watched him take hits as we've uh, researched him and watched him on film. So you want a quarterback that's mentally and physically tough. Uh, 